Hello everybody, welcome back to another Crippled Space Program video, and today we are going to be flying a fully reusable SLS, which is now in the air, and get the time lapse going. So, uh, yeah, today's video, is I've made a fully reusable SLS, and that is completely reusable, and no parachutes, because I have parachutes there for plebs, right? So, <laughs> um, we are now in the air. I decided to launch from the desert launch site to make the booster recovery, like, possible. Um, if we were to launch from the normal KSC, we would fly way out over, and then when we uh, were to ditch the SRBs, they would go crashing, or, well, ideally landing, but, you know, in the middle of the ocean. That's generally not what you want, because we want to be epic recovery on land. I guess I could have put a drone ship, but that, that's a lot of work, and it's actually really difficult to do. And especially considering these SRBs have, like, like three meters a second of extra delta V on them, so... Um, you'll see what I mean in a second as we uh, get ready to uh, cut those SRBs and stage them away in just a second or two. So there they go. Staging the SRBs and then we can get booster cam now or SRB cam or whatever as we can track them as they come in for their landings. Uh, as you probably also notice, we had to do a very, very steep ascent profile because actually, yes, uh, if, even if you launch for the desert launch site, um, if you pitch over too much, you will the boosters will get way out in the ocean. So we had to go really steep. Um, so that kind of just creates a really weird launch profile. We have to go super steep initially, um, and then we have to flatten out quite quickly with the, um, the SLS core stage, uh, so we can get it on a more normal, reusable trajectory, recovery trajectory. So we're going to be plopping all six of the air brakes on each of the SRBs, but you might be wondering, well, how are we going to land? Well, oh my gosh, how land? So... Now um, we have those six thud engines on each booster, but where does the fuel come from? Uh, rhetorical questions to the max. Uh, if you saw the, um, if you saw uh, the the nose cones uh, on the SRBs, you can see they're actually a fuel tank, and that's where we get the fuel from. So we bear, like we are really tight on the delta V here, but uh, you will see in just a minute we will uh, relight the, uh, or I guess not really, but just light the thud engines, and then we can start our landing burns. There's some landing legs uh, in the nose cone that will deploy when we get low. As there they go, the two landing burns have started up. We're gonna drop it down to one time speed in just one second as the two boosters come in for nice little landings and. Touchdown! Welcome down! You, we probably couldn't see, well, because Im images were caught, but the Delta V, there is like very, very little. Delta V is really close on this mission for most of our pieces that are recovered, so. Uh, we are now pitching quite flat with the core stage. Another reason to pitch flat is we're trying to get as much of our orbital velocity gained from the uh, core stage as possible, so the upper stage has to do as little bit of a work as possible, because it also has to be recovered. Um, recovering the upper stage and the command pod were pretty tricky, especially because no parachutes, so uh, arbitrary restrictions, right? But I didn't, I no parachutes for the uh, for the Orion. Um, it's also complicated the Orion because you have to recover the service module. So um, we can separate the core stage now, and we can uh, get it on its landing. If you don't know how the SLS um, uh, launch profile works, what it does is it launches uh, the core stage, gets uh, the app flap set to a really high altitude, just I did 400 kilometers. Uh, in, for KSP, and then what'll happen is the upper stage or the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which is a Delta IV heavy upper stage, uh, will will, circ will not circularize, but it'll just raise the periaps above the atmosphere, and then it'll just uh, continue on to the to the moon, right, for Artemis. So uh, the, the core stage is on a suborbital trajectory, but we did have to slightly uh, do a little bit of a burn to move the trajectory so we didn't overshoot this little island, and now we can relight the engines again to do our entry burn, because those air brakes, yeah, there are four of them, but you know, the core stage is pretty big, so we do need a lot. We need a little help from the engines to slow it down. There we go, it's gonna continue to uh, can shut down the burn engines, right? And then uh, now it's just about time to uh, relight them for one final time for the landing burn. And drop down to one time speed, and you'll see the Gs get pretty crazy here for the landing burn. That's a lot of thrust coming out of that mammoth engine as the core stage is now coming in for a nice little landing on the nighttime side, which is kind of lame, you can't really see it as well, but oh well, here we go. Plenty of fuel, there's loads of fuel looking for in the core stage, which is pretty epic, so uh, there we go, last few meters above the ground as it comes in for a nice, beautiful landing. I know, so buttery, right? So, I'm um, greatest booster pilot ever, and it totally, eh, there's touchdown, and it totally doesn't tip over. I have nothing to see here, folks, right? Um, now we're gonna go ahead, and unfortunately, oh, you guys have been clickbaited, uh, but the, the launch escape system has been jettisoned, and unfortunately, it is gonna have to die. Um, you guys, you guys have been, you guys have been clickbaited, clickbaited. Oh my! I, I know that, this funny story. Uh, tangent time, right? For the, my first uh, like fully reusable, I did fully reusable Saturn V, 
and I start like half the comments, I'm sort of like half joking, but like, you didn't reuse the logic escape system, so in my future, like, uh, you know, when I did a fully reusable N1 and stuff, I tried to reuse the launch escape system, but because the core stage has a, the thing on such a steep trajectory, the launch escape system unfortunately uh, melts on re-entry, so. I don't know, maybe, they, maybe we could say that they, they, they found all the little debris fragments and they reassembled it and reused it there. There, there's your head cannon, I guess. But uh, we're getting ready to do our transluter injection now with the upper stage, and this is a great time for me to do the plugs. Oh my gosh, guys! If you are enjoying the video, there is a good old comment button, or a like button, or a subscribe button. These are all buttons that YouTube says you should press, and a notification button. Um, there's also a link to the Discord. That's another button. I, I say you should press that one. Um, and also, you can become a member. That also is a good button to press. All those buttons that you can press. Thank you, though, guys, very much. We are getting really close to 10,000 subscribers. By that, I mean we're, like, still 1,500 subs away. But I think that's close, so... Thank you, everyone who has subscribed and joined our Discord and all the fun stuff. So, we've now separated the inner and cardiac propulsion stage. That is such a long thing to say. I don't know what to call it. Just the upper stage, I guess. Um, and we're going to follow it as it does its little re-entry here. It does have some solar panels just so the probe core can stay charged uh, while it goes all the way out to the Mun height and then comes back down. So... Basically, this thing, we have some air brakes on it. It also has to do a little bit of an entry burn. It has loads of fuel, but the really the tricky thing with this one is that the uh, Cheetah engine loses a lot of its thrust and efficiency at low altitudes, so it is very difficult to get to get the, and the craft to have enough thrust to not like Im like blow up when it lands, right, to slow down. And because it loses all its efficiency, you basically, you don't get very far with the fuel you have. That's why I have to, I'm saving like a third of the fuel for the landing burn as we, uh, as we are now through our peak heating, uh, basically through our peak heating, uh, I still have to kind of open and close the air brakes. I'm mainly doing that just so I can control our trajectory as we come down over the Kerbins. So, uh, deploying the air brakes one final time to cover that little, like, deserty patch of, I don't know, I guess the grass is dying over there, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna burn a lot of fuel. Part of the reason I'm trying to burn fuel now is as we burn fuel, we get a little bit lighter, which increases our TWR, so, you know, it's like, it's got, it's an arc, guys, I'm an artiste. I am, no, I'm not, this, you can watch this landing, it's really janky, so, here we go, 35 meters a second, oof! Oh, 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 <laughs> That was actually kind of the plan to use the air brakes as landing legs. It was, I told you, really janky because the landing legs, the cheetah's a really big bell, so it's really hard to make landing legs that are big enough, so we just had to like kind of flop it on the air. Was, and somehow we hit at 35 meters a second and didn't blow up. So that was, that was lucky. This is not, that's not the only hard landing because the hardest thing to recover was definitely the Orion Command and Service Module because, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, this this stage has a lot. This well, this this whatever you call it, the spacecraft I guess has to do a lot. It has to first of all rendezvous with the gateway station, which is what we're doing right now. Then it has to leave the mon, and then it has to have enough fuel to land. Um, so we are rendezvousing now. Uh, I'm not going to do like a whole a moon la mon landing or anything, but like do a proper Artemis mission because this is a but it's about the SLS, right? So we'll just they'll, they'll dock and then we'll do like a sneaky sneaky crossfade and pretend they did all their or excursion activities. Maybe this is like a resupply mission to the gateway or something and they don't go down. I don't know what to do, you know, do a lot of words. So I was actually kind of worried that the air brake would cause the docking not to work, but it was fine. But uh, yeah, so that's basically that. So here we are. Oh my gosh, guys, they're doing all their mission stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh, their mission is done. Much wow. So uh, we can decouple the, uh, the docking port or decouple the Orion and continue on. So um, the Orion had a very similar problem as the upper stage of SLS in that it has a vacuum optimized engine that has very little thrust. Um, when you, uh, when, uh, you know, when, when you're firing it at sea level, I don't know why I couldn't think of the words, but uh, yeah, it has very little thrust when you're firing it at sea level, right? So it, it would not, because the, the Orion rate, the capsule, it weighs a lot more, uh, relatively speaking, than the upper stage uh, did. Um, it just can't land. So what I actually did is I fitted four Terrier engines. I radially mounted that, or Terrier, uh, Twitch engines. Um, and some air brakes to help slow the thing down. So the Twitch engines do basically most of the work. I still have to light the Terrier engines because the Twitches don't have quite enough thrust to be able to slow us down all the way. The air brakes also do help a lot. Actually, we had to take a few passes here because we were coming down a little bit higher than the upper stage. Um, so... Uh, yeah, a lot of not melting training. We're also trying to make sure we don't land in the water because that'd be very lame, you know, because I actually put landing legs on this one because the land terrier isn't massive, so we could actually land it on the legs. It'd probably be a little bit safer not to, like, crash the crew pod down. Um, here we go. We're going to come in for our, our final pass. going to lower the orbit just a little bit as we come in 
for the final, the final landing or the final entry attempt here. Uh, attempt. Hopefully, it's a, not an attempt. But it's a success. Well, I guess we are attempting it. What am I talking about? So, uh, yeah, uh, coming through, we entry. Lot, a lot of big old fiery stuff as uh, as we have to keep uh, popping the air brakes and stuff to slow it down. But also, don't want to melt the air brakes because they're pretty important. Um, so there you go, coming through uh, through about peak heating right about now, and coming through peak G's right about now as well. As they are now through 20 kilometers, and now we can everything can start to calm down a little bit. And now we get time for the the sketchy bit, which is the landing. So going to enable the twitch engines, and we can get ready to fire them up for our landing burn with the carrier also firing as well, watching our delta because it gets really low right now. Dropping the landing leg, dropping down to one time speed as we can watch the Delta V get really low, watching the speed stay really high. Ow! That was a doozy. That was like 20 meters a second. They pulled like 10 Gs down that landing, but somehow the landing legs buffed out, so. Um, yeah, probably not very comfortable. A lot of hard landings here. I guess, I guess this is the Ryanair. The Ryanair channel, I guess. Um, on screen right now is all of our channel members, so thank you to everyone who has become a member. Also on screen is the Patreon, so thank you everyone who has become a Patreon. That's going to be the end of the video, so thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please order a comment through the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.